So Iron Man 3 is a film that I constantly, constantly defend. And now, yeah, and I defend it because people don't like it, mostly because they don't like that they subverted their expectations. Boo hoo. Mainly from the mainly from the Mandarin. And I know who the Mandal Mandar Mandarin is. I know who he is in the comics. I know the thing that I think is really important to know is that it ain't really that I think important. I think I think met and so many, if you really cared so much that your expectations for comic book films are met, especially with theories and stuff then most comic book films don't follow a certain, you know, set of stories. And I think this film is actually a good film, I'd say, in my opinion. Again, in my opinion. If you have other problems besides the Mender, then that's different. But I think the most criticism is they wasted another villain. But I actually thought it was a good twist, and I never really expected it. And I think I also like the deep, I also like the deep, um, personal, um, character development they have with Tony, you know, it, it's it's more of the man behind, you know, the suit, and more of, you know, Tony's journey, and his struggle to be Iron Man, and I think you've never really seen, it's a new path for Tony, a new path for the characters you've seen in the other Iron Man films, while I think having really nice Iron Man moments, I think they, they have a good way of utilizing the Iron Man suits in a unique way. The Iron Man armor and unique way and Tony's abilities as with the what he can do with the Iron Man suits in it in a really unique way and I think and I think it uh, it's also um a film that I can really rewatch and find something new to enjoy from it because I think I think there's so little subtle moments that really work for me and I think especially with Tony's alternate feet, I think, in Endgame, I think, you really do see a kind of journey and transformation that, that I think starts in this film, and I think the directing and the acting and the, the choreography of the kind of action and the stunts and the nice location and um, all of it works for a nice ending. Again, I love, like, the last 30 minutes with all of the Iron Man suits that that's another thing that I really enjoy from this film. So I think, and so I think that's what I enjoy. I think ultimately the villain that they gave us was, I mean, I mean he wasn't the greatest villain, but I think I could kind of enjoy him, him as, as the villain. And I don't think I necessarily need the Mandalorian, Mandarin. I, I like to keep, I said the Mandalorian, Mandarin. Because I think also they do tease the Mandarin at the end, so I think that's still a possibility that he could still be kind of in the loop. And if you don't get the film, and I think I know people who criticize it. And have you seen the rank if my in my ranking of all the MCU films? Uh, all, so all of it, it's not even that low, but it's also not that high. It's not like the, it's not like my favorites, but it's also not the worst. So I think it's always in the middle for me where it's. Not the greatest MC film, but it's also not the worst. And so I don't have that much to criticize, nor do I have that much to praise. It's you know, a film that I can accept is in the MCU, and I does think its best moments are having good character development with our main characters. Okay, so stay tuned for more videos coming right at you.